Hello. Hi. How are you doing? Great. Good to see you. Good to see you. How was your week? Love the flag. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. yeah you gotta yeah. represent. Uh, yeah. How was how was your week? How are things going? Okay. I, uh, it's a very sunny day, but a bit chilly. So uh, my uh, my 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 printer was out of toner, so I took the dogs for a walk, and I stopped. Uh, Stopped work after lunch, and uh, then I took a nap, and then I woke up, and here I am. So it's all good. And that you? all sounds yeah, no, that, that sounds great. It's uh, it's similar here. It is chilly but sunny, and it has been all day. I do. There are clouds rolling in and out. Um, I went to the UPS store and look what I printed off. Oh my God. Oh, and fantastic. I got and the pictures. So I have it now. I have a manuscript of it, an official oh. manuscript of it. I love the pictures. Oh, good. Oh, good. Yeah. Oh, you like them. Oh, yeah. good. Those, those are those are kind of preliminary sketches, but, sure. but yeah. they have a lot of energy and, and the I mean that you can get just from very, I mean, sort of simple sketches, you can get yeah. each character. I thought she, no, I thought it's a it's a woman, right? Uh, uh, no, that's no. Actually, that and the lower, the lower one with the. No, I meant the head. artist is a woman. No, no, oh. his no, it's a guy. His name is um, uh, Eric, er, Eric Craven. Yeah, he's a Midwestern middle school art teacher. Yeah, uh, and uh, no, I, I'm glad you like them. I do very much. So uh, and then the character sketch. Yeah, 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 that's the heroine. Yeah. That's the, that's Christine. Oh, good. I'm glad you got that. Terrific. Yeah, okay. yeah no. So good. finally, I was able to. Yeah, no, do a version. So you, well, you like to read? I I like to read, real pages. Me too. No, yeah, it's <laughs> it's, and I mean, I can read online for an article for a page or two, but yeah. I have a hard time reading a whole book electronically. Yeah. I don't know why. It just yeah. It feels overwhelming or something, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Also, I don't know the handling of a book. You put it down, you pick it up. I don't know. There's something. It's a different experience. It's a different experience. So, yeah. I didn't watch the the Oscars. Oh no, me neither. Yeah, I oh. don't watch the Oscars. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I so. The whole thing, I'm just saying, and I'm saying on my channel, I, I, I talk, I will talk about it with people in my own community, you know, people I know, and I'm not talking about it generally. Okay. I'm not talking. About, it's not a topic of discussion because I mean, I, you know, I do Sonic Roadkill. I do sort of my views and opinions on the news of the day, um, but that was my my opinion on that. Is I'm not going to. I that's for me to share with people who know me and who I have context, and I'm not having a public. Yeah, but it was interesting, like who came out of the woodwork out of nowhere to be like, what did you think of that? And I'm like, yeah, exactly you are who I'm not discussing it with. So I don't, I don't but know. The degree to which it has displaced a war in the news to me is, is, a, is a real reflection on our, on our uh, cultural obsessions, that's all. I mean, oh, but, yeah, no, yeah, I mean, that's yes, yeah, as if, as if I didn't know, as if right. I didn't I mean, know, yeah, um, um, so, and then also the, I mean, if we're going to talk about that, and let's, and sure, let's talk about that, the other thing, while the news cycle for really several days left, right, indifferent, waffled over whether Joe Biden's unscripted words were too strong or not to describe a war criminal as a war criminal. Um, the, he was continuing to commit war crimes. Like the news cycle paused, stopped reporting that almost entirely to debate over whether, meanwhile, 
you know, hospitals are still being bombed, cancer yeah. wards, maternity wards, um, yeah. schools, like where people are sheltering in the basement because their homes and apartment buildings have already been destroyed. Um, troops, even as they're re retreating, are setting booby traps in the street. I mean, this is like guerrilla war. I mean, I, don't, I mean, it's, but it's, why report that when we can debate whether Joe Biden really meant what he obviously really meant and I yeah, know. I mean, Donald Trump spent his spent ev every time he spoke was off script and inappropriate, and and Biden goes off script and tells the truth. And um, yeah, anyway, no, and I do understand. I mean, that is newsworthy in that. I mean, I, I the complexities of international diplomacy, the complexities of. Yeah, no, I know, but but that's yeah, again. Um, and then the other sort of like the news cycle that I, Hunter Biden, it's okay. I do, it's not that I don't care because I want to be very clear. Um, and I'm already yelling. <laughs> um, if he if he committed crimes, he can go to jail. I don't the, I don't defend him. I don't whatever. Yeah. It's not that it, that's not my issue. My issue is he's not the president. He's not an advisor to the president. He doesn't work in the White House. His emails have nothing to do with this. Uh, therefore, I mean, it, at minimum, I mean, it, it, it is a, it's a distraction. And meanwhile, Jared Kushner is actually going uh, to war, uh, you know, speaking yeah. in front of the January 6th. That's barely reported. That was in the White House, you know, while, you know, while an insurrection was happening. Clarence Thomas's wife is texting Mark Meadows. And that's, well, I guess that did, that got a fair amount of news as well it should, but. I mean, I don't think anything, we already talked about that. I don't think anything's gonna come of that. Um, what, what, I think what I, I knew but never quite understood is the degree to which the Supreme Court is, is unto itself untouchable and, and not even the Chief Justice can admonish or even advise a fellow Supreme Court uh -huh. justice. Okay, so here is the danger of, you know, all that we, I, I talk, I talk about this all the time, you know, all the, all the critical race theory, all the, there are now 240 bills to ban how schools can talk about LGBTQ, just as, you know, just so we're talking about trans visibility yeah. day, most of them are related to trans in particular, the whole fear mongering about men in our girls' bathrooms, which is, I mean, just insane, whatever. But um, sorry, I get I get worked up and then I lose my train of thought. Um, just as they're going on, here's the real danger of how if you do, if those who control the textbooks. So with I, I I actually had fairly progressive teachers who did teach me. I got you know I I was given clips from Upton Sinclair, The Jungle. I had teachers who taught me about real labor. I had teachers who did teach me about Harriet Tubman and all those things. Um, I was very fortunate. I went to a predominantly black high school. Um, yeah. And I believed up until I will say like literally like five years ago, up until 2016, up until this current administration or the last administration and really the modern day and present that what I was taught, which is, and this has nothing to do with race or gender or anything, but was that the series, uh, the system of checks and balances was the smartest, most um, equitable system ever created, designed explicitly, explicitly to be equitable for everyone in a way and democratic in a way it had never been before. No, it was designed by rich white landowners to make sure they could, among themselves, maintain power. And and the all the checks and balances are really about sort of rural versus urban small state versus big state, but none of that has anything to do with actual democracy, equality, whatever. And so, no, the checks and balances don't, all the things that we I kind of took for granted that no one would ever do, therefore we don't have to explicitly write it into law. Well, first Trump, but now the entire Republican party has said, we'll demolish any norm or, you know, we will, block Merrick Garland for over a year and then make completely specious arguments about, I mean, you know, I mean, they're, they're they, they don't even try to hide the hypocrisy or, 
I mean, they, in fact, they're almost proud of it to their own base, but um, yeah, no, and the system works for that. The system works for who it was designed to, um, and it always has. And so yeah, it, needs, and that, it continues it, to need to change. And so, yeah, the power of the Supreme Court, um, people have always thought of the executive branches, but it, I mean, it's really, it's, yeah, no, it's the Supreme Court um, appointed for life. And really, at the end of the day, when you think of all three branches, they're just, however any law comes into power, whether a president executive does it, whether it comes up through Congress, whether he vetoes it, and it however a law comes up, the Supreme Court is the final say. Uh, and they're appointed for life. And, and they're still using court packing, which isn't even happening or being discussed or on the table as an excuse to try and block a justice. Meanwhile, their guy literally actually packed the court. Now with, I mean, these people who history will prove have no integrity whatsoever. So. Well, they're proving that themselves now. I mean, on yeah, I mean, why right. history, really, every, history every, four to, every four to three vote is, you know, it's the, on party, it's on it's on political lines, on political issues, it's political. So. I mean, Justice Roberts is the only one who is surprised. And, well, no, I there, I mean, I don't know. It's they they've all the even I hate to say their names, but Coney Barrett and, and Kavanaugh have surprised me on some of their rulings. But again, I feel like it's 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 gaslighting for their they're biding their time for their moment when and again, whether that's Roe versus Wade or what have you. But there, but also, I don't know. I mean, I guess I guess there were certain things I was terrified about them becoming into the court, and maybe it doesn't actually have as much power, or maybe I don't know, but yeah. Um So what else? We don't. <laughs> we def okay. So Lost City, the movie that you guys went to see, is the number one movie in America. I know that. No really, way. No that way. Doesn't change your opinion. I know. I. <laughs> it is, no. It is fact, beyond that. I mean, yeah. no. For, for, no, it's given. Given it, I would say. There are worse movies, mm -hmm. but given its potential, mm -hmm. just in terms of the, 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 the characters previous work as they mm -hmm. act as always call their work mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. they have all done much better work yes. yeah, yeah yeah they probably know that mm -hmm. um i'm glad they don't have to be embarrassed by it now if it's been voted as a top movie but it is really 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 disappointing and i i have i will say this when it comes to adventure movies i have extremely low standards Mm -hmm. So I I it <laughs> right I mean you you I, I, turn I don't brain have off to, and joy I mean, you don't have to you don't I, have to do much to impress me you just no pew, you pew, don't pew, have pew, to pew. <laughs> but you you got to still get that right. right there is a formula and modern Hollywood gets it right a lot of the time I mean it's yeah. interesting how much across a team that I work with you know, eight people, including myself, who have very diverse tastes. And I, you know, we fill out all kinds of surveys and things. And I, you know, because of appreciation days, I asked them to fill out little surveys and one likes yeah. horror and one likes action and one like, but when we talk about the movies overall that we're all watching, they're action movie. I mean, they, they, I mean, you know, they're, it's, it's the superhero movies and it's because they make them very effectively. It's a very specific kind of entertainment, yeah. but then when they get it wrong, it's, they get it wrong. So yeah 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 um so go ahead oh no you go ahead no i i was say i i was i started to watch because i i've been watching these what i call border shows they're european cop shows and they're usually <laughs> between austria and germany mm -hmm. or, and i've been watching one and well it's not new that's so interesting it's probably made four or five years ago between finland and russia and the Finnish, I've just started it, but the Finnish prime minister has been killed on the road. It's not an accident. And it turns out that uh, part of the plot is that the Russians oh. have been involved and that there are secret papers that people are trying to get hold of, which prove that 
Russia is, and this is four years ago, planning yeah. to invade all its neighbors. Oh, well, yeah, but I mean, four years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, because everyone and their grandmother is claiming, I predicted this, 24, which, well, yes. was, which was like 2000. They had a whole season about Russia and oligarchs. I mean, it's everyone and their grandmother is planning, I predicted yeah. this, because they've been doing this for like a day. So I'm sorry, not to dismiss, but I mean. No, no, it's true. But the, the, but the, the fact is that the, yeah. that, that his, his motivation right is the grievance that stalin had is the grievance that yes. russia that russia has had yes about being beaten with mm -hmm. the exception of the second world war where they were smart enough to change sides in the middle of mm -hmm. it right mm -hmm. with the exception of the second world war they've been beaten over and over and over and over again mm -hmm. so they, there's a huge grievance that's been built up there so um Okay. And it's expressed. Okay. To, all right. Oh, wait, well, no, I will. Yes. Um, did you hear, and again, I don't know if this is propaganda or not, that they said the Ukrainians bombed a like oil factory or yes. a fuel. And do you believe that? Do you, does that change? What does yes. that mean? Yeah. To you? I, I, uh, the, 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 what the news that I saw was that they had with helicopters moved very low. 20 miles into Russia and, and, and bombed a fuel depot, and there were pictures of it. Um, Russia said it happened, said that they did it, and the Ukrainians wouldn't say they did or didn't do it. And I think if I was a Ukrainian, I wouldn't claim to have done it because I wouldn't want them to know how it was done or sure. from where it was done. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so it seems it's absolutely okay for Russia to invade Ukraine from all sides with tanks and everything else, but for Ukraine to send two helicopters 20 miles into Russia is somehow an act of the third world war. I mean, right. No, right, right. No, okay. aren't you no. supposed to punch back if you're in a fight? Right. No, yeah, no. I mean, again, yeah, no. Okay. So yeah, I'm a, I'm a hundred percent in agreement. I mean, and my understanding is, I mean, they've, these are basically troops who've been pushing back, pushing back, pushing back, pushing back from key from like the you know the capital yeah, yeah. and they've now pushed it back to the russian border whoops they went over it you this is the war you brought to your doorstep now you know and so yeah i have no sympathy or not it doesn't yeah that was the second part does it change your opinion no i have i absolutely a, a strategic strike when you have the opportunity no i you know in what has a war zone that has devastated your country no yeah no i have no judgment on that or no yeah no i think that that's absolutely acceptable at this point they were aggressed upon so clearly but no yeah. i'm just curious about how all the yeah your perspective and how it's being reported from what you're hearing there was a news flash about an hour ago about a possible peace treaty i don't know if that was a uh what I mean, that I was keep, i feel like i keep seeing that but I, you know i, yeah, I mean but I, I think the i think the russians want to buy as much time as possible so that they can get their supply lines or their mm -hmm. more more conscripts on the field. So I don't think I would take anything they said seriously about mm -hmm. a peace plan. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, I hope it I hope it's over soon. Um, of course. No, of course. Uh, what else are you up to? Well, no, I, well, I was going to go back to entertainment. Can, should, should, can, should we talk about Bruce Willis? Oh, oh, yeah. Um, made me think of Moonlighting, actually, because that, to me, that was his finest moment. Sure. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Him and Sybil Shepard doing a yeah. kind of a Cary Grant, uh, what, what's her name routine, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, he, he, do you remember Moonlighting? No, I definitely show? remember Moonlighting. I just can't remember. Uh, Tracy Hepburn. Wait, no. Uh, uh, no Catherine no. Hepburn and Cary Grant. Yes. Oh, no, okay. Spencer Tracy and Catherine Hepburn. Yeah. Okay. I, well, no, every, it actually okay, wasn't. It's thing. more like. I think it's, back on Bruce Willis's career, I started to worry about my own cognitive decline. But that's all. I mean, I think you had an aphasia you moment. About it, you, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, what what what's a what what what's kind of interesting is that apparently it's been creeping up for a couple of years and but he's they have been helping him on the set so here's well you know here yes here's what struck strikes me um 
well, no, a bunch of things that here's some, okay. Um, well, no, here, the story to me is that last or this year, the Razzies, and they're, a, they're an organization that puts on an alternate to the Oscars with yeah, yeah. the worst movies. It happens that in the last four years or so, he has made 22 mostly low budget movies, mostly movies where it's reported he spent a di- less than a day or two on set. Oftentimes he's contracted for a full eight hour day, but he works less than four hours. Oftentimes, like you said, he's given a certain amount of lines, but then they condense them in real time right. or they remove monologues and things like that. He gets paid a lot of money. Here's the thing about these movies. In this period of time, he has propped up about two dozen low budget, unknown directors and brought uh, attention to some pretty good movies. Some of them are actually decent. Some of them are pretty bad. The Razzies chose to make a special category, worst movie by a Bruce, worst movie by Bruce Willis in 2021, mostly just to parody the number of movies he made at one time. So here's all the, here's all the, here's, here are all the components to me. The Razzies have always been sort of half funny, half been accused of punching down. Like, I mean, it's, you know, I mean, these are low budget movies that, you know, that have fan bases. And so I've always been fascinated by the people who will accept them in person, like Paul Verhoeven, speaking of something like Lost City, which may not win any artistry awards, but makes a lot of money. Paul Verhoeven movies, reliably make money over and over and over. Um, but he went and ac- accepted it in person for Showgirls. He wasn't, you know, Halle Berry went and accepted her award for Catwoman proudly. And, you know, um, <laughs> but, that, but that's pretty rare. But over the course of the years, it's become less and less funny. Um, they actually rescinded the category. They actually took it back this year. They said, you know, that especially in light of, um, and that being said, most of the directors who worked with him And actors, some people who were quoted either sort of anonymously or not, all said, you know, it's not about, you know, being frustrated by him or be, it's about not wanting to make him look bad, appreciating that he was there at all, realizing someone, an agent or whoever, kind of promised us it's not as bad as you think. Because these rumors, I guess, have been swirling around for years. Must have been, yeah. But still just kind of wanting to make, he's shown up on set, you want to make the best of it, and you just don't want to make him look bad. And that's, I guess, the general feeling about sort of where it's been the last few years. Um, yeah. So, so, so what's, what, what fascinates me is he, he had a motivation for doing this. Mm-hmm. Now, it must have been either or a combination of a desire to continue to make as much money as he could while he could for his family, maybe for his family. I mean, I'm so yes, no, no, I'm I'm making that up, right? Yes. Or that he felt he wanted to keep working regardless. In other words, that, that, that I mean, he was like a Mike, Michael Caine said he took any job that he was offered and because Bruce he was an actor. that actor and always has been. And that so I think regardless of what the actual truth is. And I think the most, I mean, yeah, I think even the most cynical, he did it for the money would again, would be for his family. And it's very, again, if you know the Willis clan, um, the the letter that announced his retirement was signed by himself, his children, his ex-wife, Demi, his current wife. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. All continue to move as a, you know, um, but yeah, whether, regardless of that, I don't actually believe that. I think, I, well, no, I think it was both. I think it's, you know, I think he got his agents and lawyers and whatnot to negotiate the best deals he could to do, to make the most amount of money he could while he still could. And he loves his craft and no one who ever knew him, including the people. And th- that's what, like, that's what people who worked on those sets were saying. Like he, he was just saying over and over, I just want to do the best job I can. I just, I, you know, I'm just glad to be here. I'm just, you know, and that he, you know, he was an actor's actor, I think, like a Michael Caine, like, and he did, he always took those parts, he always took, um, yeah, yeah, no, um, well, if Michael Caine had it, we wouldn't have had one of the greatest movies of all time, which was The Hand, which, if there had been Razzies, would have probably won one, are you familiar, okay, are you familiar with a horror movie called Rubber? 
No, I you have to look it up. It is a horror movie entirely from the point of view of a killer tire. The tire is the protagonist and the killer. Um, just, just letting you know that I'm not saying watch it. I'm just saying that exists. Um, wow. I, I, I think that I think just asking the question, giving the name of the movie, and asking people to make to to try and figure out what the horror in it is. <laughs> I don't that, think anybody a, would come up with that. It's yeah, so good. Yeah. <laughs> Rubber. And, yeah, and no, next, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's very good. For sure. Uh, yeah. Wow. So what else is going on? What else is, how, how was your actual week? You were in the city, you were not in the city. I was in the, yeah, I was in the city. I was in the city a lot. Um, uh, no, it's getting, it's getting busy. Mm -hmm. It's get, it, there's stuff going on at the gallery. I'm, I had a visit from a young couple from China who are probably no more than 30 years old. Very, very nice. I didn't know whether they were a couple or brother and sister or cousins or whatever. They said their family was building a museum it was interesting. They weren't, they had a very, they were very down to earth, but they were kind of going around the world looking at things to buy. Sure. And they didn't know very much. Sure. But when I started showing them things, they, and they showed me what they'd been looking at. It was interesting. It was almost entirely abstract painting. Yeah. And it wasn't all big names either. Sure. So I, I, I don't know. I, they're going to come back next Wednesday and look at a few more things. But it's interest. It was just interesting to me that that they 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 were the age they were. It didn't surprise me that they might have a lot of money from the family. They're from right. they're from Beijing, not sure. Shanghai. They're from Beijing, and um, very enthusiastic. And they didn't seem to be looking for investment at all. They, they, they had a museum, and they wanted, and they wanted, and they wanted to buy stuff for it. And they seemed to have very interesting taste. But this so, has happened. You no, know, and again, plug for your books. But this has you. happened a few times over the course of your career, where someone sort of comes to you, not who you expect necessarily, not necessarily knowing a lot, but having a view, having a perspective. Yeah that's unique or that's, you know, that's, that, that's their own and real and that yeah. you sort of feel excited by helping them develop and, and figure out. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I like it when people, I, it, not, it's not that, I'm, that I would agree with or necessarily entirely share their taste, but the people have a, a, a genuine emotional feeling response or even a critical response um, without, uh that that's not based on that's not based on uh information mm -hmm. it's ba based on what so so we'll see um i'm kind of looking forward although it's a it's a while away going to if i make it after my procedure i hope so to seoul in mm -hmm. september to mm -hmm. the art fair there so i'm working on actively working H have on you that. been to korea um, before what have you been to Korea before? Yes, I. When I was at Christie's, I opened. I, actually, I had a very interesting. <laughs> I, I went a number of times. Um, the I don't first remember. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The first time I went, I actually went to open a representative office for Christie's mm. in Korea, and um, it not not to have a big auction house, but just to have. Just to hire thing. somebody uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. to have an office and start having an interest in, in, in clients there. And what was, what was surprising to me at the time, because I had had a lot of experience in Japan where, mm -hmm. um, you know, the people, every, everybody I met in Japan was kind of friendly and enthusiastic. Um, the, the Korean person who was helping me do this had organized uh, a, a kind of a press conference so that 
so that I could tell, I could say what I was doing. In other words, which would kick things off. In other words, they get the press, Michael Finley's coming from New York, it's Christie's, he's setting up an office, blah, blah, blah. So if, if this had been Japan, mm -hmm. it would have been an extremely, um, it would have been polite, it would yeah. have been friendly, it would have been, you know, and and I I was completely thrown off because huh. there were five or six young male journalists. Yeah. And they were they were extremely aggressive and huh. and <laughs> there there were two there were two obvious uh tacks. One was Korean art should never leave Korea. Mm. Why is Christie's? Why does Christie sell mm -hmm. Korean art to foreigners? Mm. Now, now, just at this time, a wealthy Korean had given a huge collection to the, huh. uh, the uh, Victoria and Albert Museum. In other words, my perspective was many people, many, many Koreans want their culture um, mm -hmm. understood and appreciated mm -hmm. outside Korea. So mm -hmm. in other words, you're exp in other words, it's an export. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about great objects that No, no I, yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. About the, cultural, they, cultural. their idea was absolutely Korea for Koreans. In other words, yep. um, uh, you are you 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 won't understand us, you shouldn't be looking at our art, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And the other thing was and I found this, it was explained to me. The press in Korea is, or was at that time, universally opposed to uh, social class and wealth. In other words, it was mm -hmm, a, mm -hmm. not necessarily socialist, but they believed, and probably, and probably not without reason, that all wealthy people were corrupt. They yeah. were part of a corrupt government system, sure. and art was part of part of that. So, so I mean, I I I set up the office. I had some clients, and I mean, Christie's was already had had with, and Sotheby's and a lot of other other dealers and galleries were dealing in 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 Korean art uh, and, worldwide. And when you say. Um, not without good reason. You mean because all wealthy people are complicit in all that because you are a anti-capitalist, anarcho-capitalist, anti-capitalist like I am, right? I'm a tool. I'm a tool. <laughs> I'm a capitalist tool. Like well, we all are. I mean, I no. Well, I'm. I, well, I, I talk about John I mean, basically, I'm the anarchist homeowner now. I'm the. You know. I mean. I. You know. The. The. Well, the, well no. It, well, I, no, I think. Not, I think not, what. If what, what, what is happened? unique about the Asian system oh. in so in Korea and Japan? Yes, is that <clears throat> if you are extremely wealthy and you are caught, you can pay someone to go to jail for you. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. Right. You're you're the CEO of the company. The owner of the company is never going to go to jail. Mm hmm. The, the CEO might go to jail. The the deputy might go to right. jail. But I mean, I don't because, know. I mean, because his sister is married to the prime minister or the president sure. or whatever. No, but I know, but I'm thinking, but in this country, you go to country club prison. The, the <laughs> owner of the CEO never goes to a real jail either. Um, they don't have to be in the prison yard worrying about getting shanked. They just have to worry like Martha Stewart won't play tennis with them or like I don't Well, know. it's true because when when the Sotheby's owner Alfred Taubman went to jail and 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 my boss used to take him bags of quarters so that he could um get stuff out of the the treats machine to give to his friends mm -hmm. other prisoners. Mm -hmm. When he got out of jail, they said, how do you feel? And he said, I've lost 40 pounds and none of my friends. Mm -hmm. So he, right, I mean, he was on a diet. Right, no, yeah, well, yeah. Um, some of those January 6th rioters thought they were gonna get that treatment and were a little bit surprised. I mean, even if, they only, 
even if they only got 60 days, they were still surprised that they got bologna sandwiches and that the the correction officers weren't more nudge, nudge, wink, wink on their side. Like they're seditionists. Like they're, you know. Oh, uh, they really thought they were going to be with their bros and 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 well, they didn't think they were going to have consequences at all. They thought they were taking over the government. But if they were going to go to jail, it was going to be with Sean Spicer. And like they thought Mark Meadows was going to welcome them over to the country club prison. And like, yeah, I don't know. But that's... Sit at the big boy table. Well, yeah. Well... The white collar. The white collar. They went to the blue collar prison. Right. But... Some of them are still parlaying that, not not I, not that we're, we're gonna you know play violins for them because they're still parlaying that into oh yeah careers book and, deals they'll yeah, be book, book deals, deals and yeah. yeah they'll be in Congress I mean we've um, we've had Klansmen in the Senate we've had Klansmen on the Supreme Court so um, well I I didn't I used to think that was history but I guess it's not. So here we are. Anything <laughs> Anything good? Anything? I bought a Hello. car. Oh. What? Oh, happy birthday to Victoria. Did Victoria, yeah, did you guys? Oh, I, uh, we had it. We did it before the weekend. I yeah. mean, on the weekend. I was yeah, in the yeah. city. Uh, we went out. We had a nice dinner out in, in, in the city the, day, the week before. And she's, she's now ready to go to Uzbekistan. She's leaving on Thursday. Okay. Um, yeah. So, uh, and it's it it is far enough away on the map from Ukraine. So, uh, but yeah. Although it's, 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 well, I don't know anything. Was this a pre-planned trip? Is this? Oh, it was planned. It was planned for a. It was planned for this time last year. It's a group of of. Uh, it's a group of it's of women who are on the associated with the International Quilt Center in Lincoln, Nebraska. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they're going to um, various parts of the country looking at fabrics, at local textiles. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. And possibly acquiring things for sure. the museum or it's a yeah. kind of, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So they were supposed to go a year ago. So it was sure. delayed. Sure. Yeah. Um, so. Um, so I'll be quite busy. I'm looking at so the dogs are entirely mine. Yes. Um, I'll be going back and forth to the city. That'll be fine. I'll be busy. Yeah, no, it's all it's all good. And right. I, I I had a I had a meeting with, with my agent whose wife, whose Polish wife actually, her family has been working in Poland to help the Ukrainian refugees. He's my lit. He's my literary agent. Yep. And he's going to start looking for publishers for my memoir, which doesn't have a title. Um, and uh, I told him actually, I, I had, uh, I had illustrations in it, some of which were in color, but then. A painting, works of art were in color, but I went through it and I made them all black and white. And I, I think it's much better in black and white. Mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. it, it's better for a memoir, but it doesn't look like an art book. In other words, mm -hmm. it's just to suggest. No, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you understand sense. that. Yeah, it's just to, it's to suggest a painting, not not, not to say. To, it's not about yeah, the painting, yeah. but it's, yeah, no, I, yeah, that makes sense to me. So we'll see. Um, yeah, I'm a bit worried about one chapter and the um, statute of limitations, but um, we'll have to see. Maybe I'll get legal advice. Right. Yeah. On. Uh, I know, I know, I know what you're referring to, and don't incriminate yourself right now. But uh, no, I, will, I won't. Know. But <laughs> it'll be everyone will know, or they won't. <laughs> right? No. Okay. Well, you heard it here. Explosive. Yeah. No, no it's. Not. I know. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, it is. It is, however, 55 years ago. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Oh, so, okay. We were talking about, and I don't know, do you need to go? Are you? No, no, okay. I'm okay. Um, we were talking about 
the um, William and Kate's trip to Bermuda and Belize. Oh, yes. And, um, he actually ended up sort of saying in an interesting speech, you know, there were protests and things going on. The people will decide, which is not anything a royal family member had ever said and basically acknowledged the Commonwealth is a voluntary, you know, and we hope you will continue to choose our brand. We hope you. But oh, really? Oh, that's it was, yeah, good. Yeah, it was. It was. It was. A, um, you know, he talked up what he felt. You know, the benefits of the Commonwealth. He it was. I mean, it was still obviously a a sales uh, pitch, patriotic self pitch. But it was a very different tone from we were all in this together, and that's what is expected. It was much more of a. We understand that this is a choice and whatever happens moving forward, we will continue to support that. We will continue to be, have a care and an interest in this region. We hope you will choose to formally stay in the Commonwealth, but the people will decide. And it was, I mean, it, it was both, again, not even reported apparently or not major news. No, it's I didn't, kind of I didn't just, know that. I mean, much like, you know, Biden, it's just like kind of, is this something he said in a speech or is this a major policy shift? We, is he speaking off the cuff? Is he speaking, for the, did he have authorization? All of that, but I no, I thought it was just, it was, I, I caught, a, yeah, I caught a bit of the cl a clip of the speech. I thought it was interesting. Um, oh. I'm not a William and Kate fan. I mean, if it- if No, it, I'm, I'm it, not, but the, the, it's, a, it's a different, it's a very different approach because his, his grandfather's approach mm. is, she's your queen and you have to, you, you well, know, she's, she's our queen. Yeah. So, no. Right. No. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, well. Well. I, I. So he's making a pitch for the brand. That's he's making a pitch for the brand. Like everybody. I mean, you know. Right. We, <laughs> we, right. Yeah. One way or the other. Yeah. We're all doing that. Anything so else? How's your car? Did you? You didn't. I did. I bought a. I bought a truck. I bought a Chevy Silver. In fact, hold on. Um, I, yeah, hold on. There's Duke. He's just, hi Duke. Hi Duke. He's just hanging out. He's just just in. And where's Daisy? Hi Daisy. Oh, here comes Daisy. Okay, we have to show Daisy. Here comes Daisy. There's Daisy. Hi Daisy. Can but you then, see? Me? I don't know if you'll be able. Yeah. If you guys want to go, so you can know, like, Can you see? It's just a black pickup truck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. That's it. That's that. Yeah. No, that's my truck. Um, well done. And it, so, it's uh, okay. Is it... <laughs> no, it did. It took a series of, you know. Uh, it have a. Is it is it manual? Is it automatic? No, it is automatic. I'm actually I can drive it and I'm actually driving it. It is. It has. Hold on. Chickens are trying to come inside the house and dogs are outside the house. Okay, I won't worry about that for right now. Well um, done. Congratulations, son. Does it have a name? It, it, it's, a, it's a chef or a name for it individually or for the brand or for the- Individually. Of, no, I haven't named it yet. Okay. Um, but it's a, yeah, no, it's a, it's a 1999 Chevy Silverado. It has over 400,000 miles on it. However, it was owned by a mechanic for the last 23 years and I am the second owner. Um, okay. It has been used as a mechanic's shop vehicle and okay. everything, basically everything has been replaced. And so I don't have the records, but I talked, I bought it from the mechanic who's been driving it. It's been his personal vehicle. Um, he actually bought the 2021 version of the same truck. So this sort of shows his commitment to this. <laughs> you know. Okay. Um, and I got to ride in that and kind of see, but this has all the bells and whistles for 1999, like power heat, power seating. It's, I mean, it's an old idea and it's, it's, um, no, it's just, it's a pickup truck. It's a four by four. It has a V8 engine, which is my first, and like a V8 engine is just like the big massive, like, it's like a bus, right? It's, yeah, no, it's, it's a good vehicle. I'm really happy with it. Um, I've taken the dog out to Kubota gardens. I've, um, but yeah, no, basically everything's been rebuilt on it. The transmission, the engine. So it's a very old vehicle, but it's been meticulously Good. maintained by a mechanic. So I, I'm pretty confident in it. 
for a while anyway. But again, it doesn't. It only has to last me a couple of years. Um, That's great. So did you sell the Jeep? You put it up for sale? No, or? not yet. Um, I'm still debating. I'm like, well, now, now that I, I mean, it's stored, it's in the garage. Um, it's definitely four by four season. So I think I, I, I can think about how I want to sell it. I don't think I have to sell it quickly or, right, right. and then actually, maybe I want to learn to drive manual again. And actually, I mean, I have this, I, I can now actually use my pickup to tow the Jeep up to the mountains and then use it for what it's meant for, which is like the That's four wheel in. So that's a good Maybe idea. Maybe I'll be that guy. I don't know. But um, you'll be that off the road guy. Right? Off the road guy. But um, no. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. No. Upsides. It's. No, I'm really happy with it. But I guess the only downsides are, you know, I just went from. All right, my dogs are barking. Someone stop. Guys, come inside. Um, Oh, here they come. Oh, wow. Yeah, come on. Come on. Yeah. Get... Oh, they won't come past the chicken. Dude, just tell them to move out of the way. <laughs> the, the dogs are afraid of the chickens. Um, <laughs> but okay. All right. You're fine out yet. Um, the downsides are that it's. Uh... Oh, no, wait. I can't. Yeah, no. I guess I can't remember the downsides. No right downsides. Okay. No downside. Well, no. I mean, obviously, it's a, it's an older vehicle. Um, it's got its little quirks. I like the door has to be jiggled manually, but you know, um, there's. Hi. Hey. But yeah, it's it's nice to have a running vehicle again. The Prius. I'm still debating what I want to do with it. Whether I want to sell it, donate it, or you know. Um, Cause for kids. Not, <laughs> I I sometimes I just Google like best best car to donate like best place to donate your car and I fall down all sorts of wormholes. Cars for kids. First of all, every single time I Google that, everyone who hates the cars for kids. Daisy, stop barking at people. Everyone who hates the cars for kids theme song so much. That's like the top result of any time you talk about donating a car. The cars for kids. Like one eight hundred. They, they, they know what they're doing. Well, no, I know. I well, you know, I talk about law a lot about marketing and branding. I never went into advertising, but part of my heart, I could have gone there. And as an anti-capitalist, I'm so fascinated by advertising and marketing. Yeah, it's terrible, but it knows how to worm into your brain. The last hotel you stayed at when you visited here was across from Video Only. They have like some of the worst local commercials. And it's exactly the same format, like call 1-800-VIDEO-ONLY, but it gets stuck in your brain. It's a brain wormhole, and that's yeah. that's all they need yeah. to do. It doesn't have to be good. It just has to be effective. Memorable. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> um. But yeah, no, glad to have a new vehicle. Um. I don't know. Other than that, well, I I gotta get my gotta get in it. I gotta get my my hip together. And, and when's that? When's that? That's coming up. When June, is that? June. Okay. Mid June. And how are you? How has it been since then? You're on. Well, what I, I I should be up right away, but I have to be in the city for two weeks because right. the the therapist has to. I have, someone has to visit me to do therapy. No, but I meant, I'm sorry. I meant, how have you been since your incident and before you, I mean, you're uh, it, so, look, I would say a good 80% of the time I'm fine. Yeah. And every once in a while it gets very painful and I take some um, Tylenol yeah. and it doesn't by the next day or the next afternoon or whatever, it's okay. So it's good. Yeah. Yeah. The reason I'm doing it is because that has happened enough that I don't want it to become it's more still preemptive. Good. Yeah. It's yeah. Preemptive. Yeah. And yeah. and also, as they pointed out, I am in very good health. So you should have this done when you're in good health. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I plan to stay that way. Good. Absolutely.
So I'm going to go see the see my doggies now and play with them while there's still some light. Absolutely. Are you going to have a good day? Yeah, no, yeah, definitely. Good. Here's some I'm really psyched about your truck. The chickens are now in the living room. They're just They're now in the living room. Yeah. Um, if I don't close the door, they just make their way in. Um, yeah, no, I, I am. Yeah, I'm super psyched about my truck. I will, I'll give you more updates next week. Yeah. Is, okay. How does Saturday work for you? It's better? fine. It's, it's fine. Yeah, I think it works a little better for me, but we'll if see. If it's better we'll for you, it. it's fine for me. It's okay. okay. All I right. love you. Love you, son. Right. Take Talk care. Talk to you soon. Talk Bye. You soon. Bye. <laughs> it's like a video game. The chickens are like the, 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 that. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna show up guys. But, but thank you for going outside and I will bring you treats. I don't think I can bring this camera all the way down. Let's see how far I can bring it. Okay, Goldie and Tilly. Come here, Goldie, come get some treats. Because Duke, Duke, they're not dog treats. I, <laughs> Duke heard the word treats. Motherfucker, it's oh. corn. You can't eat raw corn. It makes you sick, dumbass. I'm sorry. Come back in. Now everyone's come back outside again. Now you're going to have to get past the chickens again. And Daisy's just running in circles. So that's what Daisy does. Where'd Daisy go? Tilly, I am okay. <laughs> Fellow farms. Luna in or out. Luna, last call in or out. Okay, that, your name is not Luna. You want to peck the camera? That's always funny. That's always like funny because you think it's you or something shiny. Go it. Go for it. Peck it. Peck it. Peck it. Get the camera. Get the camera. Get the camera. Okay. Sorry. I am going to. Bye, Tilly. Hell. And Daisy is running in circles because that's what she does. Thanks for watching this very special preview edition. I don't know why I know it's exactly true. I think I might post this as a preview and then season two, which was filmed previous to this, will come after.